Hey everybody, so today I wanted to make a stock market overview video and I just want to say wow. I mean, I saw a lot of crazy stuff today, especially near the end. And let me just go through it. There's there's a lot of things going on right now and I really can't tell if we're bullish or bearish. Like we're literally, literally at crossroads here. So I'm going to show you exactly some of the stuff that I mean. So if you watched yesterday's video, I was telling you guys that we are at a very pivotal point and that if we break underneath this point, it looks highly bearish. But we did break below this point today, but we actually closed back within it. And let me show you. So we had this old trend line and every single time we bounced off this trend line, we had a massive rally that followed, as you can see. So, you know, in theory, we were supposed to bounce off this area right here. And then we we're supposed to have this massive rally again. And notice that um, all the lines just intersect right at this one point, which is right around um, 392, 393-ish. It's like 391 through 393-ish. So this is where this area is. So um, notice we have this downtrend channel. We have this bottom support line. We have this top prior resistance line. We have this old support line. And when we zoom out, we've got this uh, pretty weak support line right here. So everything just kind of like lines up to this one area. Now look exactly where we close, like smack right dab in this area right here. Like can't make this up. Literally, we knifed below it, but we closed basically right back within this area. I mean, if you look, we're basically right above it. So yeah, I mean... Absolutely crazy. Now, what we're going to see next, I really, really, really don't know. But I do want to point out, volume-wise, look. Look at this volume right here. We're starting to um, fade out on uh, S&P 500 volume. It's still very high. I mean, we're at 121.44. The session's still not over. So, you know, we could pick up a little bit more volume here. But I am noticing that this volume profile is starting to go down a little bit. So if we could start seeing smaller volume here, that's going to be a bullish sign. So um, smaller volume along with the bounce off this area, that's going to look very bullish in my opinion. Now, um, let me just throw on the moving averages. So when the moving averages are this darn low, what I like to do is I like to start looking at the weekly. Where are we on the weekly? Huh. So yeah, maybe if SPY can close above 400 tomorrow on the weekly, then I think that would be a nice little sign that we might get a bull run. Let's go look at Apple. Now this is the one thing that really makes me a little bit hesitant to say if we're going to have this bull run because look um, I know it looks a little complicated but let me explain this a little bit maybe it'll help if I take out some of these lines yeah let me clean this up a bit so as you can see we have this old trend channel which we knifed below and see this move right here, that's about um, like 10%-ish. So this is close to like a 10% move right down here when we knifed below this channel. So this is how I know that my channel is right. You know, I have my um, lines drawn correctly because it lines up with this knife. So um, we also have this um, prior support line where every single time we bounced off it, we had a massive rally. And I also know that I have this line drawn correctly as well because look, when I zoom in, you can clearly see that sell-off. Now look at today's move. This is crazy. We knifed below this uh, trend line that I have drawn, and then we fell a significant amount. I mean, at the worst, we were below 5%. We, we almost had another 5% sell-off. So yesterday, we had like a 5% something sell-off. Today, we had 2.6% um, sell-off. So it's almost like 8% down. Apple in the last two days. So that's pretty significant. And look, the way that we drew this candle, it's a doji. Now, this is like an indecision candle. Like 
it could be a reversal candle as well. You know, we could print this doji and then the next thing you know, we could get right back within this, um, right back within the support line. So to get back within the support line, we basically need to just be above uh, 2%. We need about 2% from where we are now at around um, 145, 146-ish. So that will get us back above this. So if we can do that tomorrow, and if we could make a weekly print above this line, I just think that looks so much more bullish than where we are right now. Right now, this looks very, very bearish. And the only sign of hope that I have is that we printed this doji, which could be like this reversal candle. We don't know. So I'm going to go to the um, weekly time frame, and I'll show you why this is important. Now, when I go on the weekly time frame, I zoom in here. You can see that this line still holds. So on the weekly time frame, the way that this candle needs to close, we need to have this wick all the way down here, and we need to have the body all the way up here. So we need a close above 146 on Apple by tomorrow to be looking a little bit better on this market. So, um, you know, let's just also throw on the moving averages too. Oh, so yeah, would you look at that? If we're looking at where we're bouncing off, it's almost around like 137. So, you know, maybe we could even sell off a little bit further in the future, and then this could be an area where we bounce off of. So who knows, like this 100 uh, weekly could be a good um, bounce point. I mean, we didn't quite fall that low. We fell... Oh, 138.80. I mean, if we fell all the way that low and then we bounced off that, you know, that would look a lot better. But yeah, Apple is the one thing that's really making me a little bit nervous here. So you can see our price action just on these uh, weekly moving averages. We're stuck right in between the 50 and the um, 100. So yeah, also when we broke this area right here, the trend channel, this also lined up with the... Um, 50 day moving average on the weekly time frame. So yeah, you can see that when we sold below that, we knifed down. Now, um, yeah, I think this 136.7 could act as support in the future, maybe even tomorrow. So maybe even tomorrow. So uh, yeah, really crazy stuff. I mean, if we just ended a little bit more bullish on Apple, I would feel better. But right now I'm just not feeling too good about uh, the price action on Apple. I mean, you can clearly see this knife as soon as we broke this area. Now, uh, moving on, let's look at Microsoft. Something very similar. Except on Microsoft, this isn't really a doji. And we're like so close to being back in here. I don't think we're quite in here. I think to be back above this trend line, we need to be um, like $2 higher. So we're so close here. And let's actually look at the volume here on Apple. Yeah, today's volume on Apple, extraordinarily high. I mean, the selling volume was unreal. Yeah, look at that selling volume. Not good. So I'm not too bullish on Apple here. Just given this um, selling volume, given this knife down, you know, we do have that doji, so maybe we could see that reversal. Maybe. First off, let's look at the moving averages. Let's go on the weekly time frame. On the weekly time frame, if we do want to have a bull run, then, you know, maybe if we do have a bull run, we can make it above this 100 day moving average, which is at 260.99 on the weekly. So uh, we got about 2%. So we need a 2% move from Microsoft today or tomorrow. And then we'll be back above the uh, 100 day moving average on the weekly time frame. So if we do close um, below that, then, you know, looks pretty bearish in my opinion. Now, I personally think Microsoft could go as low as um, 235, I definitely feel like. Um, maybe even 190 at the worst. 
but I would definitely want to be a buyer of Microsoft here at 190. Because if we go back here, this is basically the uh, pandemic high. So definitely want to be a buyer of Microsoft at 190. Also keep in mind, they have that acquisition of uh, Blizzard and Blizzard is a profitable company. So it's going to add to their earnings per share. And um, that's going to be, I believe it's in June or July of next year is when they're going to finish that acquisition. Now, um, here's one thing that makes me a little bit bullish. So I'm just looking at UVXY because, you know, it's basically following the VIX. And the VIX um, on Weeble is kind of slow, but um, the UVXY is real time. So um, there is two things I want to note on the VIX. When we zoom out, let me just zoom in a little bit. Now, when we have the biggest moves on the VIX, it's generally just one massive move up and then we um, fade. And then every single time that we have one massive move up, when we start going sideways on the VIX, then that's when we see a sell-off because um, volatility is fading. So um, let me point out some more examples here. So you can see we had this massive move up and then we just started going sideways a little bit and then we sold off. You can see that here again. Massive move up, sideways, sell off. So that sideways action to me is volatility just kind of tapering off. So I go up here again too. So right here, massive volatility, we go sideways for a few days and then we sell off. So once we see the sideways price action, I happen to think that that's when volatility will die off. So when I do look at this, it's kind of rounding out a little bit here as you can see, and um, the volume profile is fading as well. So let me just zoom out here. Now, when we do have these um, massive rally days, the um, volume profile is actually pretty high. And then when we start fading, the volume profile gets lower, as you can see. So here we have this massive move, followed, um, volume goes up, fade, volume goes down. Massive move, up and then volume down. So you can kind of see this trend is building out. So I do feel like we're going to start rounding out here on the VIX. I could be wrong, but generally when I do see the sideways price action, it follows up with a fade. I don't necessarily think that there's any more major events coming up this month. Not, none that I could think of. Um, I think a lot of them just happened yesterday and today with the CPI and the PPI. I mean, the PPI, the core PPI, was um, was a little bit uh, bullish because um, if we're just looking at the core PPI, then uh, the dollar should fall a little bit. But um, if we're not looking at the core, PPP, core PPI and we're just looking at the PPI, it was actually, um, it actually went up. So um, not, not as favorable. But with CPI, uh, the month over month increased, so uh, not as favorable. Year over year was uh, less than um, the last report, so you know, kind of a mixed bag. But um, if we do start seeing volatility fade in this market, that is when you're really going to know that um, we're going to see a rally on the S and P 500. That followed by fading volume on the S and P 500. So. Um, I don't know where did my S&P 500 chart go? Right here. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna want volume to fade off here, maybe down to these low levels, and then um, this will look a lot more bullish. Now I'm gonna switch to um, XLF. Now XLF is uh, pretty darn interesting. So we had that same exact trend line that I had drawn out on Apple, Microsoft, and Spy. And um, you know, here we actually knifed below, but we have this massive, ma and I mean massive, falling wedge just building out on XLF. Like, just look. You have this bounce right here, bounce right here, bounce right here. And we actually nice nice bounce right here we rejected here 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 and here so 
if we have this bounce and then we break out of this wedge, then I think that's when you're going to really see SPY take off because the financial sector just has not been doing well. Financials have not been doing well. As you can see, it's just been fading nonstop in this falling wedge pattern. So eventually, you know, I think we're going to break out eventually of this wedge. If we continue in this movement, you know, I'm expecting a breakout of this wedge by the end of May. So maybe we could see a bullish breakout. If we just see a bullish breakout, you know, and maybe we um, retest this high, then that's going to be a pretty significant move on the S&P 500. So I'm definitely paying attention to the financial sector. Now, IWM, this was an anomaly today, but when you really look at it, maybe not so much. So I'm going to go on, um, I guess I really got to zoom out here. When I really zoom out, just here, I mean, we are literally at lows here that are in line with pandemic highs, pre-pandemic highs. Now, um, also pay attention to this, this support line. So this support line catches um, this massive bottom, catches this massive bottom. It also catches this massive um, disconnect before we oversold to the downside on this crash. Also catches um, this little movement right here. So notice that this support line intersects with um, this prior resistance, this pre-pandemic resistance. And I think these two lines together are acting on our bounce today. And um, one more thing that I do want to note. So uh, right now my internet's lagging a bit. Thank God that got fixed. Um, let's look at the moving averages. Now I'm on the weekly time frame. The one thing I truly notice is this 200 day uh, weekly um, moving average. So it's at 173.39. I think that's where we want to close above on IWM tomorrow. Otherwise, on the weekly, we close below the 200 weekly. So that's going to look pretty bad. So if we could be a little bit bullish tomorrow on IWM and close above the 200 MA weekly, that's going to look much better. Now, lastly, let's just look at QQQ. So, same deal here on QQQ with um, S&P 500, SPY. So I have these uh, intersections. So I've got um, this old support line. I've got this prior resistance line. I've got this trend channel and I've got three intersections all at this one point, which is intersecting right at around um, 292-ish. So we're pretty darn close to being there. We're slightly under. And, you know, I'm pretty sure, like, this is because of Apple and Microsoft being slightly under. So, yeah, I mean, if we could uh, have a good day on Apple tomorrow, then, yeah, we'll be back above this area. And we'll be back within this trend channel. We'll be back above this support line. And we'll be back above this prior resistance line, which is now going to act as support. And um, let's just look at the weekly time frame. Yeah, weekly time frame, pretty darn clear that this is very um, bearish, actually below the 100-day moving average. Now, I would think that the next big support would come here at 258. I know that's a ways away, but, you know, just given the way that the market is going, I do think we could see that in a future date. Maybe not now, but I do think in a future date we could see that. Let's just look at the volume profile today. So when I do look at the volume here, I mean, it's not really saying much. If we do see volume profile um, fade a little bit, that would um, be a better look in my opinion. So yeah, I hope this video was uh, helpful for you guys. And I really hope that tomorrow is a better day.